All right, let's just jump right in. What if I told you that everything you think you know about the universe is wrong? Not just a little bit wrong, but fundamentally, completely, from the ground up wrong. We're about to dive into a theory that doesn't just tweak the old ideas, it literally tears them all down and starts over from just one single concept. And yeah, I'm serious. This isn't about some minor adjustment. The theory basically says, forget it all. Forget particles. Forget forces. Forget energy. Forget even space-time. It argues these aren't the actual building blocks of reality. No, they're just labels. They're convenient names we've given to patterns because we didn't understand what was really going on underneath. So what is the foundation? It's this simple, almost shockingly simple idea. The universe isn't made of things that move. The universe is the motion itself. That's it. That's the whole game. Everything we see, everything we feel, from a giant planet all the way down to a single thought in your head, it's all just an echo, a pattern that shows up because of this one single primal reality. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty here. How in the world do you build an entire universe from just motion? Well, the theory asks you to imagine a state before anything, a true absolute nothing. But here's the kicker, here's the big twist. A state of absolute nothingness, a place with zero rules, is actually super unstable. I mean, really think about that for a second. To have perfect, total stillness, you'd actually need a rule, right? Something that says, thou shalt not move. But in a state of true nothingness, there are no rules. So if there's no rule to forbid motion, then something has to move. It's almost inevitable. And that first little flicker, that one initial movement, that's the spark. From that single moment, the entire story of our reality just starts to cascade outwards. And that's the core of it, really. Motion theory. It's the principle that motion itself is the only thing that's truly real. Everything else we talk about, matter, energy, time, they're not things. They're what happens when motion starts to organize and synchronize with itself. So we're not looking at a bunch of separate, disconnected ideas. We're watching one single story unfold. And in that story, matter and energy and time, they aren't the main characters. They're more like the chapters that get written as the plot moves along. Okay, so we've got the basic principle down. Now for the fun part. Let's take a metaphorical hammer to some of the ideas you probably take for granted. We're going to see how this theory completely reframes, well, everything. Starting with the one thing you probably think is undeniable. The clock on your wall. I mean, come on. Time, right? We feel it, we measure it, our entire lives are built around it. But is it a real fundamental dimension of the universe, like a cosmic river we're all floating down? Motion theory's answer is a hard nope. So what is it then? Well, according to this, time is just a comparison, a relationship. Think about it. When you measure one second, what are you actually doing? You're not tapping into some universal force. You're just comparing one motion, say the swing of a pendulum or the vibration of a quartz crystal, to another motion like how fast the Earth is spinning. That's it. It's just motion compared to other motion. There is no river of time. And this reframes one of the biggest ideas in physics, relativity. You know how an astronaut's clock in space ticks just a little bit slower? The old explanation is that time itself is bending. But this theory says, no, that's not it. It's just that the little motion loops that make up the clock are synchronizing at a slightly different rate than the motion loops of a clock back here on Earth. It's all about a change in rhythm, not some mysterious warping of a dimension called time. Okay, so time is an illusion. You ready for the next one? This one might be an even bigger gut punch to your intuition. We're all taught that we see light from stars that's millions of years old, that it traveled across space to reach us. But what if light doesn't travel at all? Let's break this down, because it's a big one. The conventional view, a photon zips across space from point A to point B. The motion theory view, reality itself synchronizes between A and B. So you're not seeing ancient light. Your eye is literally locking onto the rhythm of that distant star in the here and now. So the speed of light, it's not a travel speed. It's the maximum sync rate of the universe. It's how fast any two points in this cosmic web can get in tune with each other. Okay, let's bring this back down to Earth. Literally, the desk your hands are on, the chair you're in, it feels solid, right? Real, substantial. 
it's made of stuff. Or is it? What if that solidity is also just another illusion? That feeling of something being solid, it's just motion that's been caught in a holding pattern. Think of it like incredibly tight, stable little whirlpools of motion. These loops, these whirlpools, they resist being disturbed. And that resistance, that's what we perceive as mass. That's what feels solid. So when you break those loops, like in a nuclear reaction, the matter doesn't turn into energy. The trapped motion is just released. It was always just motion to begin with. All right, so we've smashed time, we've smashed light, we've smashed matter, we've taken reality apart. So now, let's see how this theory puts it all back together into something way more elegant and unified. This is where it goes from being a cool, disruptive idea to a potential framework that could tie all of science together. So what about forces like gravity and magnetism? This theory throws out the idea of mysterious fields and replaces it with something called sink pressure. Imagine you have two spinning tops on a table. As they wobble, they'll kind of nudge each other until they find a more stable, shared rhythm. That's it. That's every force. Gravity is just that happening on a massive scale. Big objects are just sliding towards a more stable, synchronized state. Magnetism? That's just a preferred direction for that synchronization. Every single force is just motion trying to find the path of least resistance. And when you start to see things this way, wow, the walls we build between different sciences just dissolve. It all becomes one story. Physics? That's just a study of the simplest synchronized loops like electrons. Chemistry? That's what happens when those loops interlock and form rhythmic bonds. Biology? Well, that's when these motion patterns get so complex they figure out how to copy themselves. Hello, DNA. And what about thought, consciousness itself? Maybe it's the peak of this whole thing. Massive networks of neural loops all pulsing together in perfect sync. It's one single cascade from physics to thought. And this right here, this is the holy grail of modern physics. You've heard of the big problem, right? How quantum mechanics and general relativity just don't play nice together? This theory says that conflict is an illusion. It's not quantum versus relativity. It's just one single system of motion. It just acts differently depending on the situation. You get the weird, probabilistic dance of a loose, floppy motion loop at the quantum level and the stable, predictable path of a huge, tightly synchronized system like a planet at the cosmic level. Same system, different behaviors. Okay, so let's just pause and think about this. If this is actually true, if reality is nothing but motion, then what happens when we figure out how to engineer that motion directly? This is where we leave the realm of theory and jump straight into what sounds like, well, pure science fiction. I mean, just think about the possibilities. Propulsion without any propellant. You just manipulate sync to move. Tapping into the background hum of the universe for basically free, limitless energy. Medicine that doesn't just treat symptoms with chemicals, but actually retunes the biological loops of your body to heal itself. And what about AI? An AI with genuine awareness because it's built on self-organizing motion, not just static code. Maybe even dramatically extending human lifespan. This is the kind of future this way of thinking could unlock. Now, I know this all sounds huge and cosmic and kind of out there, but the most powerful evidence for it might not be in some billion dollar particle accelerator. It might be right in front of you. You don't need a lab. You just need to pay attention. So just for a second right now, just notice it. That low hum from your refrigerator, that's motion. A leaf trembling outside your window, motion. The very thoughts flickering through your mind, that's a cascade of neural motion. The world isn't a collection of static, dead objects. It's a shimmering, dynamic, constantly moving reality. And the coolest part, you're not just watching it, you are it. You're part of the motion. And really, that's the final inescapable logic here. In the end, there's just no getting around it. For anything to exist at all, something, somewhere, had to move first. Once that first move happened, the rest was kind of inevitable. It was always, always motion. So we're left with the only two questions that really matter. The two questions that, if this theory is right, are underneath every other question you could ever ask about, well, anything. What's moving and what's the moving doing?